here, broadcasting live from the Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine. Really want to talk about fibromyalgia, what it really is, what you can do to make some changes if you do have fibromyalgia, and uh, how we can expect to see changes in just a few days. So here's some tips for you. But let's start off with what really is fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia, if you have, had, if you have heard of the phrase, if you know somebody with fibromyalgia, if you do have fibromyalgia yourself, then what you're going to know is it is a very tough thing to deal with. Fibromyalgia is a condition where there's a lot of pain that's involved. And there's a lot of debate on uh, whereas what it really is the reason for it. And how do, we target, how do we target therapies so that we can treat people with fibromyalgia? And so fibromyalgia is a condition where there are different pain points, especially along the, the neck and the shoulders and the hip girdles. Um, for a long period of time that's associated with a lot of depression, associated with a lot of anxiety, associated with hormonal changes in the body. And so um, when people are labeled fibromyalgia, uh, a lot of times um, they can be shunned by a lot of people in the medical community, in their own families, their own friends, um, because they have to deal with this chronic pain that nobody knows about that's really around them. So people can get very lonely and very depressed about it. And anybody dealing with chronic pain, especially in the cases of fibromyalgia, can feel very, um, dis um, power. They, they, their power is stripped away from them because they don't know what to do. And they seek a ton of doctors, they probably have seen pain management doctors, they've seen neurologists, they've seen primary care doctors, they've seen all these doctors. Who, and they end up getting on a lot of different medications, and most of them are on antidepressants, they're on some sort of uh, pain medicine, or some antidepressants that act as pain medicine. And so nobody uh, really is trying to target the root cause of what all this is because it's multi multifactorial. There's multiple factors in dealing with fibromyalgia. And we really have to see every person can get to fibromyalgia in very different ways. We've only been open here for a couple of days, and probably 30% of the people we see have, fibro, uh, have fibromyalgia because they've been to so many other doctors, and they're trying to find some answers. And so when they're trying to find answers, and they can't get the answers, um, uh, a lot of people with fibromyalgia seek different specialists and specialists and specialists and specialists, and they end up on these medicines. But let's talk about some root causes that may be contributing to fibromyalgia. And so, number one, the biggest thing that I'm going to harp on with most chronic diseases is the gut. All right? The gut is a very important organ. In the gut, there are a lot of different organisms, a lot of different bacteria, a lot of different yeast species. And these bacteria and yeast control the inflammation that goes on in, in our body. Not only do they control the inflammation, these bacteria also talk to our brain every single second. <clears throat> they dictate how we feel. They dictate our metabolism, they dictate our pain levels, and they dictate, most importantly, the inflammation levels. And so when we have a gut that is, um, we call it dysbiotic, meaning that the bacteria in there is not as robust as it should be, or the bacteria in there is not as broad spectrum as they should be, we have a lot of chronic inflammatory issues. And this is the, the, the one thing that can cause uh, people to go into a stage of chronic pain, which then they, we get diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Along with that, along with inflammation, people have a hard time getting rid of toxins in their body, whether it's heavy metals, uh, whether it's toxins from the food that they eat. And people with fibromyalgia tend to have their metabolism significantly lowered over a period of time. And if you know anybody with fibromyalgia, the longer they've had it, uh, it seems like the, the heavier that they can potentially get. And that heaviness is actually from malabsorption in the stomach. They're actually absorbing less nutrients, and therefore the body is downregulating the metabolism in a very complex way. And people with fibromyalgia can, can, can either gain weight by the, uh, by the mechanism of fat storage, or they can even lose weight by the mechanism of muscle degeneration, something called sarcopenia. Sarco means muscle and penia means the degradation or the lack of. And so when we target, when we look at somebody with fibromyalgia, we really have to look at 
uh, what's been going on uh, in their entire lives. So for example, uh, a person with fibromyalgia, they, um, they could have had something uh, in, their, in their childhood when they were, were they a really colicky baby. If they were a colicky baby, were they fed cow's milk really early on? If they were, um, the body um, doesn't like cow's milk very early on, can develop antibodies towards the cow's milk. Not only that, the gut bacteria can completely change with that cow's milk. And I'm only using cow's milk as one example, but that, um, and over time, they can develop irritable bowel syndrome. And fibromyalgia and irritable bowel syndrome goes hand in hand. In fact, it's really rare to find somebody with fibromyalgia who has, does not have some gut issues. And the irritable bowel syndrome comes from the fact that the gut bacteria, the gut flora, is, is dysbiotic, is that it's not where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> and food absolutely plays a huge role into this. Every time you eat a piece of food, um, it can either damage the gut bacteria or back, gut flora, or it can help it along. And so a lot of people with fibromyalgia, they come in, they, they really want to seek answers, but by throwing drugs at people with fibromyalgia, alone is really not the answer without looking at the food part. You have to fix the gut to fix the pain levels. And so how do we eat for somebody with chronic pain or fibromyalgia? Eat things that will help the gut. So eat fermented foods. We're talking about kimchi, uh, natto, which is a Japanese uh, fermented product. Um, you have sauerkraut, which is fermented, and if these don't, things don't appeal to you, <laughs> and, uh, they're the best sources of these uh, uh, fermented organisms. Um, so people are asked, well, what about probiotics? Well, probiotics are well and good, but most probiotics don't really stick in the gut unless you make it stick into the gut. So how do you make probiotics stick in the gut? How do you make these fermented foods stick in the gut? By eating these fermented foods or probiotics with prebiotics. So what the heck is a prebiotic? A prebiotic is something that you eat that lays like a matrix or foundation or fertilizer for the probiotics for the bacteria to really grow and nurture. Prebiotics are a lot of cruciferous vegetables, for example, are really good prebiotics. Um, a lot of high fiber substances. And these prebiotics, once they form that nice layer for the bacteria to grow on, um, that's when the metabolism starts increasing. That's when the, the species of bacteria become more and more broad. And so looking at something like fibromyalgia is not as simple as just dealing with pain. It's dealing with the inflammation and the inflammation looking at a gut that could be part of a root cause. Second part of fibromyalgia is hormonal. A lot of times people grow up with a lot of inflammation in their gut, um, their hormones can be infected. They have something called uh, downregulation of, of active thyroid hormone. So people can make normal thyroid hormone, but um, normal thyroid hormone has two different forms. Technically there's four, but we're going to talk about two of them. There's T3 and T4, and T4 is the storage form of the thyroid hormone, and T3 is the active form. And so what happens is that the body can can switch the can change T4 into T3, something called deionization. And when that happens, it activates that thyroid hormone into a T3. So a lot of times when people go to their doctors and they get the thyroid hormones checked, most doctors just get a TSH, which is kind of useless by itself. And a lot of doctors get TSH and free T4, but without looking at the free T3 component, you don't know how much of that T4 is activated. And so um, chronic pain and inflammation decreases the conversion of T4 to T3 or storage thyroid hormone into active thyroid hormone so that even though on paper they may look really good on paper in terms of TSH and free T4, their free T3 levels may be very low. And thyroid hormone is responsible for metabolism, is responsible for how fast your body goes through different cells. Um, it's responsible for hair growth, uh, skin changes. It's responsible for water retention or the lack of water retention or dehydration. It's responsible for your heart rate. So people with fibromyalgia really commonly, although their hormones may look normal in these normal lab work, um, their thyroid hormones are, are pretty low. Uh, number three, another type of hormone may be very low and that's testosterone and men and women both need testosterone so why are people with fibromyalgia why do they have a, tend to have a lower testosterone level 
because let's go back to the root cause of that gut bacteria not having not having that uh, that layer, that protective layer, uh, and that leads to a lot of inflammation in the gut, which leads to a lot of inflammation in the body. Inflammation is caused by something called cytokines, um, and three of these things are IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha. Um, if you want to look it up, that's great, but these are what we call inflammatory cytokines, and these things activate something called aromatase. Aromatase converts testosterone into estrogen, and these are three of the factors that convert testosterone into estrogen. Other things that can convert testosterone into estrogen are mercury, for example, and insulin. And so um, I say insulin because that leads me to my number fourth point. Insulin is released when we eat foods that allow insulin to be released. And these foods are generally carbohydrates and some proteins. And so the level of insulin release depends on the foods that we eat. So if we allow ourselves to eat foods like sugary foods or carbohydrates that increases insulin production, that insulin production can drive the conversion of testosterone into estrogen, and that estrogen is going to make people's metabolism go down. It can uh, make people very emotional. Um, for a lot of guys, they can get what's called man boobs or gynecomastia. Um, and, and this is the sort of the, the pattern that we see in people with chronic pain and chronic inflammatory issues. And they have this pattern, and, uh, to, and a lot of times when people walk into the door, I can tell, hey, this is an estrogen dominant person, and what's causing the estrogen dominance? I look at their history, I look at the chart, and if they have fibromyalgia, then I know that, hey, let's look at everything. Let's look at the gut, let's look at heavy metal toxins, and let's look at the lifestyle. So lifestyle is key. So what are some of the ways to make you feel better in a very short amount of time? And these are the same strategies that can boost the testosterone levels, the free testosterone levels, that can boost the thyroid uh, T3 conversion from T4 to T3. And these are things that can uh, make you feel a whole lot better, get the inflammation down in a very, literally in a few days, um, if you are diligent enough. And so uh, here are some tips. Cut out processed foods and processed carbohydrates. Um, why is that important? Processed foods cause a lot of inflammation, and the processing part and the, and the chemical treatment of these foods uh, can be uh, very toxic to our body. Um, wheat, um, most of the wheat in this country is processed, um, and it's processed with chemicals. And so wheat is not the greatest thing. You might want to go on a wheat-free diet, on a sugar-free diet, and processed food-free diet, and focus on things that I said earlier, that will feed the gut with good bacteria, um, which can cause that bacteria to, to grow, which are fermented foods, um, prebiotics like cruciferous vegetables, and resistant starches um, like some sweet potatoes. But go easy on the sweet potatoes. Um, but but um, just, by, just by focusing on this and getting rid of uh, other uh, things that may be toxic to the body, um, you can get the inflammation level down. Another thing that a lot of people with fibromyalgia uh, intake um, are alcohol. And alcohol and alcohol products are actually horrible for this because alcohol is one of those things that affects the liver and decreases estrogen breakdown. So you have all this free-floating estrogen in the body and that can cause emotional instability, worsening depression, worsening anxiety, and worsening pain. So um, I really want you guys to really focus on the fact that fibromyalgia is something that we treat something about something that can be potentially reversible in a long period of time if you focus on eating the right things. If you want more information, if you want to come see us at Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine, uh, included in the description will be a link to our website. And go ahead and call and go ahead and uh, click on uh, the patient portal. You can actually register as a new patient yourself and book yourself an appointment. So. Um, Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys listening.